All right, welcome back. So whenever anyone first finds out about active recall and spaced repetition, um, there's one concept that seems to always crop up and that is flashcards. Because flashcards are a marriage, a marriage of active recall and spaced repetition. So what is a flashcard? A flashcard is basically, let's say you have a piece of paper, I'm gonna use this trackpad as example. And at the front of the flashcard, you would have something like capital of Peru. And on the back of the flashcard, you have the answer. So you might write Lima, for example. Or at the front of the card, you might have three common causes of aortic stenosis. And on the back of the card, you might have, uh, if can I remember them now, uh, degenerative calcified disease due to aging, bicuspid aortic valve, and rheumatic heart disease, for example. So the idea is that you have a question at the front and then at the back, you would put your notes. Now, lots of people in the past used to use physical flashcards and there was something called the Leitner system to help you kind of induce spaced repetition with that. I think physical flashcards are a total waste of time now because we've got apps that are really, really good for effectively doing flashcards. So the one that I would recommend is Anki, A-N-K-I, which comes from the Japanese called, which is Anki Shimas, I think, which means to memorize. So Anki is a flashcard app. It's free, but you do have to pay like 20 quid for the iOS version. I think this is totally worth it because flashcards are amazingly magical devices. So I used flashcards probably in my second year, my third year, and my fifth year of medical school. And those were the years that I did best in. Like I got a first class in my second year. I came top of the year in my, in my third year. And I came like top 10% just about in my fifth year when I used flashcards. And in my first year, fourth, fourth year and sixth year, I didn't use flashcards. And I ended up being a lot more mediocre, like middle of the pile, like fourth decile, that sort of thing um, in first, fourth and sixth year when I didn't use flashcards. Uh, anecdotally, I love flashcards. Flashcards are great. But how do we use flashcards properly? So I recommend you download the app Anki and you can use that. Alternatively, there is Quizlet. And if you pay for Quizlet Premium, which costs like 20 quid a year, I think, then you get the spaced repetition built into that. But why is Anki so good? Uh, and I'm gonna show you why Anki is so good by showing you on here how Anki works. So here's what Anki looks like, basically. Uh, you have decks of cards and then you can do the flashcards. And what you can do is you can either make your own cards or you can download a deck off the internet. Most people recommend making your own cards unless you're studying, I think, I think with medicine specifically, depending on what exam you're doing. For example, if you're taking the USMLE and you're following a resource like Pathoma, which is like a really common resource that everyone uses to, pre pre to prepare for it, then other people have already made Anki decks based off of Pathoma. So there's not much point in you, in us like creating our own flashcards for that because the work's already been done. But I think in most other subjects, it does, it does make a lot of sense to make our own flashcards because then obviously we're engaging with the information better. It's a bit harder and therefore our brain's more likely to remember it. Downloading a deck off the internet is easy. It's sort of the lazy option, but it is it is doable. So here is um, some decks that I've I've been making as I've been going along studying for uh, one of my exams. And I am not necessarily using flashcards the right way, in fact. Let's do this one. Um, so the MRCP is the membership of the Royal College of Physicians, and it's, it's an exam that doctors in the UK have to take. And so let's click on the basic sciences deck and click study now. And so, Let's see what the, the front of the, of the flashcard says. VHL syndrome is a something condition predisposing to neoplasia. It's due to an abnormality in the VHL gene located on blah, blah, blah. So mode of inheritance, I'm gonna say autosomal dominant. Yes, it is. And I've hit the space bar to see what the answer is. It is autosomal dominant. And that means I can now rate this flashcard as being again, good or easy. And I've set intervals for this. So if I didn't get that, it would come up again in the next three minutes. If I thought it was good, I would get it in 15 minutes. And if I thought it was easy, I would get it in four days. So I got that one, let's say easy in four days. HLAs are encoded for by genes on chromosome six. Yes, I got it right. I can't believe that. And that was straight out of my head, easy. HLA something are class one antigens while HLA something are class two antigens. I don't know, I don't know what this is talking about. Okay, so HLA, A, B, and C are class one antigens while DP, DQ, and DR are class two antigens. That does ring a bell, but I didn't know the answer. So I'm gonna click again. So this comes up again in three minutes time. So you can see this is forcing me to do active recall by testing me on, on like the knowledge of this stuff. But it's also forcing me to do spaced repetition because if I got something wrong, it means I can tell it to show it to me again in three minutes or in 15 minutes or in, or whatever. And if I got something right, it can tell it to show me show it to, show it to me again in four days. And if I got that question about von Hippel-Lindau syndrome again in four days time, and I got it right again, then the easy interval would change to like a month. And so, Anki has an algorithm for spaced repetition built in so that the, the harder cards come more often 
and the easier cards come less often like you know you know you would actually space the intervals out um and there's been loads of people on the internet who have dug down into the maths and the science behind the anki space repetition algorithm so i'll put links to some of those things in the in the video description uh, anki is really really popular in medical school uh, because you just have a huge torrent of, of information to memorize and so for the people that use anki they swear by it but one of the problems with anki is that to use it well and to use it properly ideally you want to keep it to one fact per card rather than just copying and pasting all your notes on a, on a single card and ideally you want to be doing it consistently over a long period of time. So I love using flashcards if I start early on and I can do it for isolated facts. So for example, in my second year, I used flashcards to memorize drugs and to memorize bacteria and viruses and things. So if, when it came to drugs, it would be, you know, a flashcard about, I don't know, paracetamol. And on the back of the card, it would be its mechanism of action uh, and would be its salient side effects. And so I would learn those and we'd be kind of going through flashcards in a group with my friends one of the techniques of working together with friends is that you can all do flashcards together, and that's nice. So I remember in my second year of med school, me and my friends Callum and Paul, we would order some uh, chicken doner from the local kebab shop. Um, and at like 10 p.m. at night, we would just kind of run run through drug, drug flashcards. And we did that throughout the year, which meant that when the pharmacology exam came around where we had to use this knowledge, it was super easy because we'd been doing the flashcards throughout the whole year. Equally for pathology, where we have to learn all these different details about different viruses, different bacteria, coronaviruses, and you know, that sort of stuff. Again, there's all sorts of specific examinable facts about that that can go straight into Anki. And so I made an Anki deck for pharmacology and I had an Anki deck for pathology as well. So yeah, in an ideal world, we would have one examinable fact per flashcard and we'd be doing it very, very consistently. But there are other ways of using flashcards. So for example, in my third year, the year in which I ranked first in the year, or rather second in the year, but won the prize for best exam performance jointly with this other girl who came first anyway. Uh, ranked really highly in the year, um, and well, I was using flashcards extensively for that. But in my third year, I wasn't using flashcards for single examinable facts because it was entirely essay-based. I was studying psychology and our exam was 100% essays, so we had to write essays about psychology. And so what I was using Anki for is that I was using it to memorize different chunks of content so that I could basically drag and drop them from my mind into the essay in the exam. So for example, on the front of the flashcard, I would write, I don't know, Carpe Key and Blunt 1972. And that would be a reference to a paper. And on the back of the flashcard, I, it would be an explanation of what they found and what the papers showed and what the results were and why it's relevant to me. And so I would, I would have lots and lots of facts on a single flashcard. But I would, if you then told me, you know, at the time, Carpe Key and Blunt 1972, I would instantly know what that study was, what they found and what essay I could, I could put it in. And this is technically not what you're supposed to do when you're doing flashcards because Ideally, you want to have one mem one examinable fact per flashcard. But I think if you have got an essay exam, then memorizing whole chunks of content, like even for some of my essays, I'd prepared really fancy, nicely written introductions and conclusions, and I put all of those into Anki. So I, I would memorize introductions for my essays. And I'll talk a lot more about this in the video called the Essay Memorization Framework, which again, I've put on YouTube, uh, which is actually one of my most popular videos. So that talks in depth about how I used Anki to memorize chunks for essays. Now, I just wanted to flag up that that is a potential use of Anki or flashcards in general, if, if you want to go the handwritten route, but I don't know why you'd want to do that. But again, on the topic of flashcards, let's talk about a few cautionary tales. So what you don't want to do is you do not want to make a flashcard for absolutely everything, because then we get into flashcard overload. And there are so many people like I, I had this problem in my first year, like I discovered Anki towards the end of my first year. And I sort of like for, for about two weeks, I was making flashcards on absolutely everything thinking, Oh, this is efficient. Why don't I make flashcards? But then I realized very quickly that actually there's just too many flashcards and I can't go through them. So I ended up going back to my other techniques. But a friend of mine called Catherine uh, ended up making flashcards for absolutely everything, like for the whole year. And she had like 5,000 flashcards by the end of the year. And she realized that there was no way she could feasibly go through all 5,000 flashcards. And she felt that all that effort was, was a bit of a waste of time. So what I do now when making flashcards is that I only make flashcards for something if I absolutely have to. Um, so if I'm making my own flashcard, I don't usually make them in my first pass through the content. Usually I use the Cornell note-taking system for that. But if there's a fact or a concept that's proving resistant to memorizing or remembering or whatever, or that I find particularly tricky, then I'll make an Anki flashcard out of it. Or for example, if I'm doing past papers on you know, a website like Past Medicine or Past Test, which is an online question bank for medical, school, uh, for, for medical students, if I get something wrong, then I will copy and paste the solution into Anki so that I know that next time, like I'm basically building up this bank of stuff that I got wrong so that when it comes to cramming for the exam, I can just kind of blitz through all the stuff that I got wrong. 
even that's probably slightly suboptimal. So the main word of warning is that be wary of making too many flashcards. I think I'd recommend asking yourself, do I really need a flashcard for this? I've got a story that really kind of puts this into perspective. And like once I made my video about Anki and about how I memorized essays with it, I started getting loads of messages and emails uh, from people saying that, hey, this, you know, these are my decks. Can you have a look at it? Can you make sure I'm on the right track? And there was one student's deck that I found. He was he was a medical student, first year medical student. And and he had like he had like sort of 8,000 flashcards. And I, immediately I was like, okay, this is way too many. What, what are you doing? And then I, I looked through some of these. And the one that stuck out was he, he had a flashcard saying, where is the heart? And the answer was in between the lungs. You know, where is the heart in between the lungs? And that is one of those things that's just so obvious that you don't need a flashcard for it. It's also a bit pointless having a flashcard because when you see the phrase, where is the heart? You know, I would say, okay, fine. If, if, if you ask me, where is the heart? I would say, all right, well, I suppose it's at the level of T5 vertebra. It, it's sort of in the middle mediastinum. It's surrounded by, you know, the anterior mediastinum and the posterior mediastinum. It's got the thoracic duct running alongside it. It's got the aortic arch on top of it, blah, blah, blah. But if I looked at the flashcard and the answer was in between the lungs, I would feel cheated. I would be like, what the hell? What is the point of this flashcard? This is a total waste of time. So that's why I told him, I was like, look, man, you know, <laughs> avoid, <laughs> avoid making flashcards for, for obvious things. And that's why I think that I wouldn't make, I, I wouldn't personally make flashcards on my first pass through the content because who knows what the bits that I'll just know off by heart will, will be and what the bits are gonna be obvious and what bits aren't gonna be obvious. I would start making flashcards on my second or third pass through the content and only if I absolutely had to. So those are my thoughts on flashcards. Again, links in the projects and resources area or wherever this is on, on Skillshare or wherever you're watching this. Uh, I'll put links to some other studies of how we actually use flashcards. Or if you just do a Google search for USMLE flashcards, if you're a medical student, then you'll find loads of people that have really gone in anal detail about how they use flashcards for the USMLE preparation. And there's all sorts of kind of theory crafting about the optimal spaced repetition intervals and all this stuff. So just find something that works for you. Uh, but that's all we'll say on flashcards for now. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.